Hi, this is Brian Kinnebrew with the Global Technology Practice at SAS. And today I'm going to be discussing the process of migrating your existing SAS 9.4 jobs over to SAS VIA. In today's presentation, I'll discuss the following agenda items. First, I'll start with an introduction to SAS VIA, followed by the primary components of the SAS VIA ecosystem. I'll discuss how to best process data and interact with CAS. I'll discuss some best practices for migrating your existing SAS 9.4 code to leverage CAS. Next, I'll discuss some alternative solutions for functionalities and capabilities that are not yet supported in SAS VIA. I'll introduce you to the job execution service, what it is and how it can help you in SAS VIA. I'll provide you with some coding examples located on GitHub, some training resources that are offered by our formal education department, and then finally some additional reading material and documentation around SAS VIA. Let's get started with an introduction to SAS VIA. SAS VIA is the third generation in-memory extension of the SAS platform. Our first generation was high performance analytics. This had the capability to speed up highly complex algorithms, scheduled jobs, and offered batch processing. However, it was limited to single user access and required that all data must fit into memory. The second generation in memory extension was the laser analytics server. This repeatedly ran less complex algorithms provided interactive use of data and code. It did offer multi-user access. However, it did also require that all data fit into memory. Our third generation is SAS VIA, as mentioned earlier. SAS VIA is a single approach to solve both use cases outlined in high performance analytics and the laser analytics server. It allows processing in memory as well as on disk, and it delivers highly available fault tolerant processing as well as multi user access. What is SAS VIA? It's an open, cloud ready, in memory data management and analytics component to the SAS platform. It caters to users with both varying proficiency levels and coding specializations. It's uniquely designed to enable multiple users to simultaneously process complex analytic workloads and ad hoc data processing and data management. It meets the resiliency, governance, automation, and ease of administration needs and demands of any organization. Continuing on with our introduction to SAS VIA, it provides the following capabilities. Analytics and data management accessible to anyone, regardless of their skill level or experience. It provides an open, scalable environment that addresses the challenges of any size and complexity while applying the same analytics and data management to both streaming data as well as data at rest. It also provides a single code base and a unified environment to curate both SAS analytic and data management assets, as well as those that reside outside of SAS. SAS Cloud Analytic Services, pronounced CAS, is the in-memory runtime engine for SAS VIA. It's suitable for both on-premise, cloud deployments, and hosted deployments at SAS. The runtime environment is the combination of hardware and software where data management and analytics take place. It can run on a single machine or in a distributed environment on multiple machines. The distributed environment consists of one controller, an optional backup controller, and one or more workers. For both architectures, however, CAS is multi-threaded for high-performance data management and analytics. SAS Studio, which is the native programming interface for SAS VIA, provides a programming environment for developing and submitting SAS programs to CAS. 
Finally, the SAS scripting wrapper for analytics transfer, otherwise known as SWAT, enables open source software such as Python, R, Lua, Java, and REST APIs to run data management and analytics on CAS. What are some of the technical benefits of SAS VIA? First, it provides a huge amount of shared memory. It holds all of the data and persists it for shared use. Second, it's a specially written multi-threaded software that was written from the ground up. It provides amazing agility. Many base SAS processes can execute as is, including the data step. It provides current machine learning and deep learning techniques. The platform is specifically designed for iterative analytics. It's also cloud ready. It's elastic, flexible, and provides a scalable architecture. It also provides increased accessibility, giving you the flexibility to use the interface of your choice. Let's take a look at some of the benefits and differentiators of SAS VIA. It provides data management for both data at rest and streaming sources. This includes ETL, data cleansing, data manipulation and wrangling, as well as analysis. It provides visual data examination, exploration, and presentation. It provides a suite of advanced analytics for both structured and unstructured data that includes machine learning, deep learning, forecasting, optimization, statistics, and both data and text mining, to name a few. It provides an inventory and governance for both SAS models as well as models developed outside of SAS. It provides a ready-made in-memory runtime environment that is automatically mutable to constrained processing. It provides code portability for enterprise deployment options, for example, grid, cloud, single cluster, multiple clusters, and so on. You can access CAS from SAS or open source languages of your choice, such as Python, Java, Lua, R, or REST APIs. It also provides centralized administration, management, and maintenance of all data management and analytic processing and activity. What does CAS provide? CAS expedites speed to answers with optimized distributed in-memory processing that provides highly scalable computational speed. It provides foundational access to underlying methods through REST APIs for software developers to quickly adopt SAS into their own applications. It includes an array of innovative algorithms and visualizations that will continue to expand with each release of SAS VIA. It provides common code that is portable. The same code works in different environments and scales with changing data. It's also engineered and architected to execute processing wherever needed to optimize ROI. This includes in database such as Hadoop or Teradata, streaming data, data in memory, also data in a private or a public cloud, and also in device. Our next topic focuses on the primary components of the SAS VIA ecosystem. This is a graphical representation of the SAS VIA ecosystem. At the heart of this ecosystem is CAS, the in-memory processing engine, and microservices, which replace the metadata server in SAS VIA. CAS can be accessed by SAS Studio as well as the API of your choice. That also connects to various data sources such as Hadoop, Teradata, file systems, or relational databases. You can also access CAS through the microservices via REST APIs, web apps, other monitoring consoles, and other clients. As previously stated, the in-memory high-performance processing engine of SAS VIA 
is SaaS Cloud Analytics Services, or CAS. CAS provides the runtime environment for data management and analytics with SaaS. The CAS server has the following characteristics. Data being transmitted to and from CAS and stored within CAS is completely secure. CAS can manage all of your data easily and share data with multiple users. Authentication is used to control access to CAS and its resources. Your identity must be successfully authenticated before your session is created. CAS can run on a single machine or as a distributed server on multiple machines. For both architectures, as mentioned earlier, CAS is multi-threaded for high-performance computing. CAS executes on tables that reside in memory. The source data for the in-memory tables can come from a variety of sources, including SAS datasets, server-side files, event stream processing, and database tables, to name a few. Depending on the source, data can be loaded serially or in parallel. You can program using new high-performance SAS VIA procedures, some SAS 9.4 procedures, and language elements, including data step, DS2, and FedSQL, or CAS actions. CAS actions are the smallest unit of work for CAS, but offer the most flexibility. To program using CAS actions, you use the CAS procedure, known as PROC CAS. CAS organizes user-defined formats in format libraries. You can use the format procedure to specify a CAS format library to store a new user-defined format. Programming interfaces to CAS include all programming interfaces that you use with SAS, as well as those used with open source languages, such as Python, Java, Lua, and R. SAS VIA provides two programming runtime servers for processing data that is not performed by the CAS server. This is commonly referred to as SPREE, otherwise known as the SAS programming runtime environment. This is exactly similar to SAS 9.4, however SPREE is housed within your VIA environment. When your SAS environment includes the SAS VIA visual and programming environments, your SAS administrator determines the server. The SAS workspace server and the SAS compute server support the same SAS code and produce the same results. The following table shows which server can be used based on the SAS environment and the SAS programming client. The following categories showcase procedures that are available for sites with SAS VIA installed. Many of these categories contain procedures that are brand new for SAS VIA. SAS Studio is the native programming interface for SAS VIA. The latest edition of SAS Studio is 5.2. There are snippets within SAS Studio which provide pre-written code to help you get started on your journey in writing code in SAS VIA. There are many different categories of snippets and within each category are several examples. To use snippets, simply modify the code to meet your needs. In addition to snippets, SAS Studio 5.2 also provides tasks. Tasks provide a point and click code generation menu. There are many categories of tasks and within each category are several examples of tasks. Simply click on the task that you need, fill in the parameters, and the code will generate automatically for you. Here are some of the new features in SAS Studio 5.2. Using the query tool, you can create a query to extract data from one or more tables according to criteria that you specify. You can generate your query using either SQL or FedSQL code. However, remember that only FedSQL is supported in CAS. Using the import tool, 
you can import several basic file types into data sets. With Git integration, you can clone repositories, stage changes and create commits, create, merge, and rebase branches, and resolve merge conflicts from within SAS Studio. You can now access files and folders on both the SAS content server and your server file system from the Explorer section of the navigation pane. You can use the new DataStep debugger to find logic errors in a DataStep program. You can run and create SAS via jobs. You can run a saved program as a background job, and the new scheduling functionality enables you to automatically run your jobs or SAS Studio programs at a specified date and time. You can use the new command line interface to access SAS Studio using the keyboard. You can create a filter based on a single column by right-clicking the column heading in the table viewer and selecting Quick Filter. You can send a copy of your results and the associated code and log files by email. Files that you can send include results in HTML5, RTF, and PDF formats, as well as the code and log files that are associated with those results. You can now specify custom SAS code to run before or after code for programs, tasks, queries, and imports. This code persists between SAS Studio sessions. You can now customize some keyboard shortcuts. SAS Studio 5.2 includes many new tasks for Cloud Analytic Services, or CAS, machine learning, and time series modeling. And finally, the common task model was enhanced to support dynamic and cascading prompts. In the next section, we'll discuss processing data and interacting with CAS. Some considerations for processing in CAS. When your data source and or your destination table reside outside of CAS, processing will automatically occur in SPRI, the SAS programming runtime environment. This is the SAS VIA version of SAS 9. When your data source and destination reside in CAS, processing will occur inside of CAS. So it's very important to remember that in order to process in CAS, both your source data and your target data must reside inside of CAS. You can process data and interact with CAS using a variety of interfaces. These include visual interfaces, programming interfaces, or REST APIs. When processing data and interacting with CAS, whether it be via visual interfaces, programming interfaces, or REST APIs, CAS issues a CAS action behind the scenes. Each CAS action is grouped into a CAS action set based on functionality. There are three tiers of control when interacting with CAS. First, GUIs provide the least amount of control but offer the highest level of user friendliness. Next, procedures, including new SAS VIA procedures and CAS enabled SAS 9 procedures, allow more control by using a SAS programming interface such as SAS Studio to write code or create procedures via a menu driven wizard. Lastly, CAS actions through the CAS language and the CAS procedure known as PROC CAS, provide the greatest level of control and flexibility. CAS actions offer options, parameters, and capabilities that might not be available in SAS VIA or SAS 9 procedures. You can also create your own CAS actions. CAS actions can also be called from Python, Lua, Java, R, and REST APIs. It's important to note that CAS actions run only in SAS VIA. In this next section, I'll cover some best practices for migrating your SAS 9.4 code to leverage CAS. One of the biggest myths around CAS is that it will always perform better than SAS 9. 
The truth is, it depends on your data, your environment, and your code. There is no magic bullet for executing code and processing data in CAS. Be very careful when running code against small data in CAS, especially a distributed CAS environment. Overhead from internode communication and data distribution can result in performance loss. Remember, by default, CAS runs multi-threaded. Some SAS via procedures, statements, and functions run single-threaded, others run multi-threaded, and some are a mix of both. Several base SAS procedures also run multi-threaded by default in SAS 9. As a first step, ensure that all of your code and programs execute successfully in Spree using SAS 9 libraries. Secondly, create CAS libs for all of your data sources. This could be data sources such as data that resides in relational databases or traditional SAS data sets residing on a file system. Third, start with the most important step or block of code that takes the longest amount of time to run, not necessarily an entire program in general, so that we can reduce the execution time and leverage CAS as much as possible. Finally, after you've done these three steps, if you discover that your code is not running in CAS, contact myself or your local SAS representative who can reach out to me for assistance. We've developed several workarounds for capabilities in code that isn't yet supported in CAS. I can also take a look at your code and troubleshoot and try to remedy why it's not executing in CAS. As discussed in the previous section, CAS actions provide the most flexibility and capabilities when executing code in CAS. Consider using the following link to learn the language and syntax so that it will be easier when you need it. Remember that everything that runs in CAS calls a CAS action. In addition to the many CAS actions provided by SAS, you also have the capability to create your own CAS actions. Please see my paper that I presented at SAS Global Forum 2019 on how to create your own CAS actions. Additionally, SAS provides several CASL built-in and common functions. Similar to CAS actions, you have the capability to create your own functions and use them in the CAS language, or CASL. See my blog at this link for additional details. CAS-enabled base SAS procedures and the data step can leverage CAS, but one must benchmark to determine which engine is fastest, whether that be Spree or CAS, for the task at hand. Remember, some code might perform better in Spree. Some CAS-enabled base SAS procedures execute partly in Spree as well as partly in CAS. In addition, some statements and functions are not yet supported in CAS. You can use the CAS language, or CASL, for 100% execution in CAS. Remember to purge CAS tables from memory when they are no longer needed for downstream processing. This is very important and ensures that you have available memory for processing. Otherwise, you might start using CAS disk cache, resulting in I.O. and potentially slower processing. Remember, it is not necessary to process all code in CAS to justify SAS VIA. You may think that the best way to get started in migrating your SAS 9.4 code to leverage CAS is to convert all of your code to leverage CAS. Please do not do this. Be selective in identifying steps that can leverage CAS. Look for some of the following. Code blocks with long execution times, whether this be 30 minutes, multiple hours, or even days. Also look for CPU intensive steps. These can be analytical procedures that are computationally demanding, such as regression analyses, mixed modeling, logistic regression, 
neural networks, gradient boosting, and so on. Data step also containing computationally intensive statements, functions, and conditional logic. Also look for source data volumes that are greater than 50 gigabytes in size. This is a general baseline recommended by our research and development department. You must also consider the computational demand of your code when determining where to execute your programs. Don't just consider the size of the data, but also consider the complexity of your code. With CAS, consider using all of your data instead of just a sample. When your source data is less than 50 gigabytes in size, Consider keeping these data sets in traditional SAS 7 BDAT format and executing your code in Spree. Again, this is a general baseline recommended by R&D, and you must also consider the computational demand of your code when determining where to execute your programs. It's always a good idea to compare runtimes between both Spree and CAS to determine the most efficient environment. Cardinality of bivariables. When dealing with high cardinality, bivariables contain a unique value for most, if not all, observations, such as loan level data. This might execute faster in Spree because the data is not distributed across multiple worker nodes. The exception is to generate a partitioned CAS table where the bivariables match the partition variables. Lastly, data order of CAS tables. By statements will group the data correctly across the CAS worker nodes and threads. However, there is no concept of ordering within a distributed computing environment. Therefore, ordering will not be honored within the various by statements. The good news is that by statements are executed on the fly. No sorting is required for by statement processing in CAS. This includes performing operations such as merging, first dot or last dot processing, and so on. When by statement processing is complete, data is then redistributed across the CAS worker nodes and threads. The exception is to generate a partitioned CAS table where the by variables match the partition variables. In this section, I'll introduce you to some alternative solutions for functionalities and capabilities that are not yet supported in SAS VIA. In SAS VIA 3.5, the data step with the descending by statement is supported for numeric, character, and varchar data types. However, the descending statement is not supported on the first variable of the by statement. This also applies to by statements with only one variable. Should you only have one variable on your by statement, the descending statement is not supported. In SAS VIA 3.4 or older versions, a workaround for this is to create a CAS view with new variables that are the negative value of the original numeric by variables. Use the new variables in the by statement in ascending order. The original numeric variables will now be in descending order. Continuing on, proc sort options no dupe key and no uni key are supported in SAS via 3.5. Alternatively, you can use the brand new CAS action deduplicate. In SAS via 3.4 or older, you can emulate these with the data step by outputting a record for the first occurrence of the last by variable. You can also emulate this with fed SQL using a distinct and group by statements. Lastly, you can use the CAS action group by info to remove duplicates. For additional information about deduping with the data step, please refer to the following blog. In distributed computing, remember that row order of a given by group is completely random. Next, if you have a data step with simget or other macro functions, these are not supported in CAS. You can emulate these functions with formats. The following example is going to run in Spree because it contains a simget function. 
you can see that in this expression, a macro variable is used. A way around this is to use a format instead. This particular example executes in CAS by substituting a formatted value instead of the simget function. With PROC append, you can emulate this with a data step, a multi-table set statement, and the data set option append equal yes on the target table. This does require SAS via 3.4 or newer. However, PROC append in its true form is not supported in CAS. In this section, I'll introduce you to the SAS job execution service. The SAS job execution service is a web-based application that allows users to register SAS code as a job. A job can be scheduled and monitored through this application. The SAS job execution application also allows for registering an HTML front end to a job. Dynamic prompts are also available within the application. In SAS 9.4, stored processes were typically made up of SAS code, HTML, and prompting. Often these items were combined into one SAS program that used put statements to generate HTML and populate prompts. This approach would often intertwine the job roles of SAS programmers and front-end developers, which led to confusion. With the job execution service application, these roles are now separated. This allows for front-end developers to work with the HTML and prompts, and the SAS developer only has to be concerned with the SAS code. As we progress through the overview, you will learn how to create jobs, HTML forms, and dynamic prompts. In 9.4, we had a prompting framework that was built into several of our products, enterprise guide, stored process applications, etc. This has been replaced with the custom tasks in VIA. Custom tasks allow for the creation of data-driven prompts. Logic can also be built to filter prompts based on previous prompt selections. A side note to this is that this is the same framework to build custom tasks in SAS Studio. With the openness of VIA, the various APIs can also be used directly in HTML or JavaScript to populate visual elements. All right, let's start with an overview of the job execution web application. On the upper left-hand side, you will find the menu for the SAS job execution application. The content menu option provides a logical hierarchy to store SAS jobs, HTML, and dynamic prompts. This can be organized any way your organization sees fit. The Jobs menu options displays jobs that have been executed within a select time period. This is handy to see if a job was successful and view the SAS log. A job can also be scheduled from this page. The Scheduling menu option displays a list of jobs that are currently scheduled. From this page, the scheduled jobs can be modified and or deleted. The Samples menu options has roughly 20 job samples to show various actions that can be taken. These range from simply displaying Hello World to creating an interface that allows a file selection and import. This is the detail of the Jobs menu option. The folder structure displayed is a logical folder structure. It does not map to any physical disk structure. Behind the scenes, SAS VIA is using the folder, files, and job definition services. Essentially, all of this information is stored in metadata in VIA's Postgres database. To create new content, such as folders and jobs, you can right-click and have a standard set of menu options, or use the toolbar at the top. Editors are provided for SAS code, HTML, and prompts. This is almost identical to the programming editor you're already familiar with from Enterprise Guide or SAS Studio. One key thing to remember is that the code is stored in metadata. So if you have a program stored on disk, 
you will need to copy that source program into the editor since the folder structure is a logical folder structure. It will not display a physical file from a physical path or physical folder structure. You will need to open SAS Studio and copy the program from the logical file into the job execution editor. Many samples are provided out of the box. This is a good starting point to learn how various actions are taken within the job execution application. Everything from a simple Hello World script to working with JSON script to uploading files. A link to this application will be provided on a slide at the end of this presentation. Although many samples are provided for you, the samples cannot be run directly from the samples menu page. They will need to be copied to one of the logical folders. To do this, simply select one or more of the samples you would like to copy and then press the Copy To button. This will bring up the above dialog box that allows for a folder selection. Once the copy is complete, you can navigate back to the Jobs menu and navigate to the folders the samples were saved in. From that point, the code can be reviewed and executed. To illustrate what we've been discussing, I will now show three different examples. The first example will show a SAS job that requires no user input and is scheduled to run every hour. The second example will show a SAS job that requires input from the user via the dynamic prompting framework. Lastly, example number three will show a SAS job that requires input from the user via an HTML form. To get started, select the public folder and right click. The menu options will ask if you want to create a file, HTML form, or prompt. For now, let's choose file. This particular job will run a SAS program that fetches current weather data from an external service. The result of the job execution is current weather appended to a historical table. The file type in the dialog box will be job definition and the server will be compute. This weather code will be provided via Git. However, the concept is not to learn about weather code, but to learn how to place your own SAS code into a job. Feel free to pull the weather code from Git or use a program you have already. Again, for SAS programmers, this interface should be very familiar. Once the code is ready and pasted, the Submit button can be pressed to test the code. Because this code produced no visual output, there will be nothing displayed if it ran successfully. If something went wrong, it will say that an error occurred. To check the status of the execution, go to the Jobs menu. The Jobs menu will show all recently run jobs. This is where we would validate that the weather job we just created and executed was successful. We can also view the SAS logs of previous jobs on this page as well. For now though, we simply want to verify the job ran and then schedule it to run every hour. To schedule it, highlight the job you would like to schedule and select the scheduled job menu icon, which is the last one across the top. Once clicked, the above dialog box will appear. This dialog allows the user to provide a name and description. The executing user can also be selected. A trigger will need to be added that specifies when a job runs. This can be any time frame from seconds to weeks, months, or years. Multiple triggers can be applied to one job as well. The Scheduled Jobs menu displays all scheduled jobs that the user has access to. From this page, users can modify, delete, and view the properties of a job, such as when it runs, etc. Administrators can also view job details and the status in the Environment Manager. In the second example, we'll put a user interface on top of the forecast weather data. This will allow an end user to select a city and a weather description. Using the previously created job, Weather Forecast, right-click on the job name and choose the Edit Menu option. We would like to add prompts to the program, so select the option Prompts. 
This selection will open up a prompt editor. Dynamic prompts are created using the common task model from SAS. This model has a lot of functionality built into it and has a slight learning curve. A link to the documentation on the common task model is provided at the end of this presentation. This example shows the creation of a data sources tag. This allows us to set the data set to pull values from, as well as the filters. Notice we are specifying the forecast data as our default table. We are also specifying two filters. The first is the city name. This is a simple prompt that is populated with distinct values from the city variable. The second prompt is the weather description. Notice that it is populated from the description column, but also has a where tag applied to it. This means that the values displayed will be filtered on the selection made in the city prompt. So for example, if rain is not in the forecast for the selected city, it will not be displayed in the description list. The common task model is extremely powerful, not only for dynamic prompts, but also the ability to create custom tasks. This is very similar to the tasks in SAS Studio. Now when the job runs, the prompts are displayed first. The user makes their selections and presses the submit button. The selected values are passed to the job as macro variables and integrated into the SAS code. Keep in mind, that the first example is now scheduled and runs every hour, which updates the forecast table. This code in the second example is simply performing queries on the forecast table. Since this job produces output, the results will be displayed once execution is complete. The following table shows the output based on the selections made in the prompts in the second example. The third example is using a custom HTML form. Just like we did to create a prompt, you'll now want to right click on weather forecast and choose edit HTML. An HTML editor will be displayed. A few details to note about this code. The table markup should be straightforward for HTML developers. Things that are not so straightforward are the type equal hidden tags. The hidden value underscore program references the job to run when the form is submitted. Hidden value underscore action tells the job to wait for the submission of the form and then execute. And hidden value underscore output underscore type tells the job to generate HTML output and results. This is the simple custom HTML form appearance. Enter your values and click Run Code. This is the output generated by the values entered in the custom HTML form. These are a couple of key links for users that want to become more familiar with the job execution service and the job execution web application. There are many coding examples stored on GitHub for your reference. Some of these have been discussed during this presentation. Others are there simply to guide you on your journey for migrating your SAS 9.4 code to VIA. The links on this page will guide you to the coding examples located on GitHub, and also the link at the bottom will provide you with information on how SAS Studio 5.2 integrates fully with GitHub. There are a variety of training resources on SAS VIA. The following link will take you to the complete SAS VIA learning path offered by our Education Division. You can take the entire learning path or choose individual courses and subjects that you want to learn more about. The last section in today's presentation provides you with additional resources on SAS VIA. The links on this slide provide you with additional reading material, including blogs, communities articles, white papers, and formal documentation. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your SAS representative or to me directly. Thank you.